Hey, what's going on, social media world? Pastor A.B. here, and I don't know if you can tell by this smile on my face, but I am super excited, and I am crazy happy to share with you guys our brand new series called Tread. That's right. We have a spiritual warfare series that is kicking off today, and I'm telling you guys, I truly believe that God has prepared something special for you through the Word of God, and I know that God has prepared something special for you through the worship. So let's take a moment to lean in. Let's take a moment to press into everything that God has for you, and I'll see you guys right back here real soon.
Hallelujah. I am praying that through today that you and I, through this message and through this new series, that we would truly experience breakthrough. As I mentioned earlier, we are kicking off a brand new series this morning on spiritual warfare called Tread. So go ahead and get your Bibles out. Uh, you guys will see it on the screen in a little bit. I want you guys to turn to Luke chapter 10, verse 17 and verse 18 for our key verse for this series. See, whether you know it or not, every morning that you and I wake up, we wake up to a spiritual battle that you and I are in the middle of. Whether we want to or not, whether you know it or not, every single day, every single morning that you and I wake up, we wake up right smack dab in the middle of a spiritual battle. And see, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to teach you about this war. But most importantly, I'm going to teach you how to prevail in it. See, Jesus alluded to this war in Luke chapter 10, and Jesus gives us some promising encouragement about this battle. See, the Bible says in Luke chapter 10, verse 17, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Jesus says in verse 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Verse 19 is our verse. He says, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Behold. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give unto you power to tread. I want to talk to you today from this subject, what the enemy doesn't want you to know. What the enemy doesn't want you to know. I came across a brief reading the other day that I believe truly sets the stage for this morning's message. It said, if you go to the Southwest desert and catch a hundred red fire ants, as well as a hundred large black ants and put them in the jar, at first, nothing will happen. It says, however, if you violently shake the jar, and dump them back on the ground, the ants will begin to fight until they eventually begin to kill each other. See, the thing is the red ants think that the black ants are the enemy and vice versa, when in reality, the real enemy is the person who shook the jar. And see, what the enemy doesn't want you to know is that from the very beginning, he's the one who's been shaking the jar. See, Satan, the devil, the prince of darkness, the prince of the air, the God of this world has been shaking the jar from the very beginning. See, the enemy doesn't want you to know who he is. He wants to fly under the radar. He wants to fly under the radar, wreaking havoc in our homes. He wants to fly under the radar, wreaking havoc in our relationships, in our children, in our bodies, and throughout this entire world. See, he's known as the prince of darkness because he does his best work in the dark and then he steps back to leave us to only to attack one another, just like the ants that we just heard about. But the whole time, he's the one that's been shaking the jar. See, the famous quote says it best. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. The greatest trick that the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. The whole time, it's been him shaking the jar. Our first thought for today is this. The enemy doesn't want you to know who he is. 
The enemy doesn't want you to know who he is. Why? I'm going to tell you why. Because you'll never declare war on an enemy that you don't know you have. You will never declare war on the enemy that you don't know you have. And this is why the enemy doesn't want you to know who he is. Lean in right here, people of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, verse 4, that Satan, the God who is the God of this world, watch this, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. He has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. See, we have spent countless time mad at this person or mad at that person. Well, yes, they need to be held accountable for their free will actions. But truth be told, something deeper is really going on behind the curtains of this world. See, one day while Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, Jesus began to shed light on this in John chapter 8, verse 44, when Jesus says this. He says, see, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out his desires. Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus said this about the devil, about the enemy. He says he was a murderer from the beginning refusing to uphold the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language because he is a liar and the father of lies. That's John chapter 8, verse 44. See, from the very beginning, the enemy has been doing two things, lying and murdering. See, the enemy doesn't want you to know that it was him shaking the jar back in Genesis chapter 3. Man, do you know that Adam and Eve had everything? They had God's image. They had God's likeness. They had dominion that God wanted them to spread throughout the earth. Everything was good until the enemy came and began to shake the jar. See, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 tells us, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing creepeth upon the earth. Later on, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. The whole world is yours. Do what you want to do. But Adam, just one thing before you go. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Listen to God's words. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. In the next chapter, guess what? Here comes the jaw shaker. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And here comes the serpent, which is the devil, which is our enemy. Here he comes and he said to the woman, Hey Eve, come here for a moment. Hey, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Hey, listen, we just heard what God said in Genesis 2.17. He says, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And the woman said to the serpent, she said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, that you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it unless you die. Listen to what the devil says in verse 4. Then the serpent said to the woman, God doesn't know what he's talking about. You will not surely die. You will, God said you will surely die. Here comes the devil trying to override God's word. You will not surely die. 
Verse 5, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. God's trying to keep something good from you. God knows something that you do. He knows something. And he's trying to keep you from something that I think you deserve. See, God knows this. Come over here and partake of this. Verse 6, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise. She took of his fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. See, right here, ladies and gentlemen, we're witnessing our first parents along with the first lie, along with the first murder. See, the first murder wasn't when Cain killed Abel. See, the first murder was when Satan killed Adam's and Eve's relationship with God. The Bible says that God said, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Speaking of a spiritual death that took place as soon as they partook of the fruit. The Bible says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, it looked good. It looked pleasant to the eyes. Understand this, people of God. Deception promises to take you out for a five star meal only to leave you empty and with the bill. See, deception promises to take you out for a five-star meal, only to leave you empty and with the bill. See, Jesus thought about that moment while talking in John chapter 8, verse 44. And Jesus said, now that I think about it, the devil was a murderer and a liar from the very beginning. Next, Adam turns around and Adam begins to blame God and Adam begins to blame Eve all in the same verse. Look at what Adam said in verse 12. Then the man said, the woman that you, that you gave me, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave of the tree and I ate. See, Satan loves nothing more than when you blame others and when you blame God. But the whole time, guess what? It was him who was shaking the jar. And the Lord said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. She said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Adam blamed the woman, and the woman had enough discernment to know that, no, 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 this is not about me and you. It was the serpent that deceived me. Husbands, listen to your wives. Sometimes they know more than what you see, more than what you understand. She said, that was the devil. He deceived me, and I ate. See, by now, Adam and Eve quickly realized that Satan was a murderer and a liar, but it was too late because here's the thing. You never know that you're being deceived until you've been deceived. You never know that you're being deceived until you've been deceived. You never know that you've been deceived. You don't know what's taking place while it's going on. You never know that you have been deceived. You never know what's going on until it's too late. Let me say it like this. You never know that you're being played until the song is over. You never know that you're being played by the adversary, by Satan, by, by this serpent. You never know that you're being played until the song is over. And you never know that you're being deceived until you've been deceived. Then and only then do you clearly see that the whole time it was the enemy shaking the jar. See, this message is stuff that the enemy doesn't want you to know. As a matter of fact, it was the enemy who was shaking the jar in the first place in heaven. Isaiah saw what was taking place in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. And Isaiah, he, he, he could not believe what he saw. And Isaiah says, how have you fallen from heaven? Morning star. Oh, one translation says, oh, Lucifer, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations. You want to know how the devil got kicked out of heaven? Here it is right here in verse 13. 
For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. Verse 14, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. It's amazing to me that Satan tries to separate us from God, but the whole time he really wants to be like God. Listen to the last thing he said in verse 14. I will make myself like the most high. Man, Ezekiel gives us even more background in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12, when he says this, you were the seal of perfection. Man, you were, you were full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Verse 13, you were in Eden, the garden of God. And every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the burrow, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the turquoise, the emerald with the gold. And the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day that you were created. Verse 14, you were the anointed cherub who covers I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. Man, you walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. Verse 15, you were perfect in your ways from the day that you was created, Lucifer, until iniquity was found in you. Until iniquity was found in you. See, it was this iniquity that led to Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. See, I'm trying to give you some background to how we got into this place of spiritual warfare before we, um, before we jump into the next couple of weeks so you can even understand what took place. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, then war broke out in heaven. Good God Almighty. Can you wrap your mind around a war breaking out in heaven? It's one thing when war breaks out amongst your family. It's one thing when war breaks out amongst your friends. It's one thing when war breaks out with nation versus nation. But in the place where there's supposed to be perfection, the Bible says that war broke out in heaven. Find them not strange when war breaks out into your life. And then war broke out in heaven. Well, what happened? Man, Michael and this angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and this angels fought back. You better lean in right here. This is why we want to give you a couple weeks about spiritual warfare because the Bible says that Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. But the Bible also says that the dragon and this angels fought back. You need to understand. Yes, you are called. Yes, you know the word, but there will be a fight. It's called spiritual warfare. And I want to teach you how to tread. The Bible says in verse 8, but he was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. Verse 9. Man, so that great dragon was cast out. Who was that great dragon? He was that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, watch this, who deceives the whole world. What happened to him? Well, he was cast to the earth. Who else? Him and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10, then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. Watch this. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. Verse 12 says, therefore now rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe, Ooh. but woe to the earth and the sea. Why? Because the devil has gone down to you and he is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. He knows, he knows. See, Satan doesn't want you to know that he wasn't strong enough. 
See, Satan doesn't want you to know that he lost his place. See, Satan doesn't want you to know that he's the one who's behind deceiving the whole world. See, Satan doesn't want you to know that he's the accuser of our brothers, of our sisters, and our loved ones. He doesn't want you to know that he's filled with fury. And he doesn't want you to know that he knows that his time is short and that he's moving in hatred and desperation in hopes to take as many souls with him to the lake of fire as possible. I submit to you today that he's the one behind the hatred, that he's the one behind the wickedness, that he's the one behind the racism, that he's the one behind the division, that he's the one behind the cold hearts, that he's the one behind the suicides, that he's the one behind the abortions, that he's the one behind the addictions, that he's the one behind the sickness and the disease, that he's behind the current that's pulling our brothers and sisters away from assembling together. Why? Because he's filled with fury. Why, A.B.? Because the Bible says, because he knows that his time is short. This is why we don't have time for hatred. This is why we don't have time for gossip. This is why we don't have time for division and unforgiveness. Paul said it like this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, excuse me. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. It says this. Paul says, anyone you forgive, I also forgive. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake. Paul tells us why in verse 11. In order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Paul says, I don't have time to be messing around with unforgiveness. I don't have time to be messing with hatred and to be messing with discord. Why, Paul? I got to make sure that the devil does not outwit us. I have to make sure that we are not unaware of his schemes. See, Satan doesn't want you to know who he is so that you'll never suspect that it's him who's outwitting you and it's him who's scheming on ways to bring you down and to destroy your family. He doesn't want you to know that he's scheming on you. So if he could continue to fly under the radar, he will continue to be successful on the radar. Good God Almighty, let me say that again. If he can continue to fly under the radar, he will continue to be successful on the radar. Let me say it like this. See, Satan doesn't want you to know his past in hopes that he can silently sabotage your future. See, he doesn't want you to know his past. He doesn't want you to know that he really lost his place. He really doesn't want you to know that through Jesus Christ, he is a defeated foe. Satan doesn't want you to know his past in hopes that he can silently sabotage your future. Revelation chapter 12 ends by saying, then the dragon was enraged at the woman. Listen to this, y'all. The dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Bless God. Let me read that again. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Who's her offspring? Those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Did y'all hear this? See, Satan has waged war on our sons. Satan has waged war on our daughters. Satan has waged war on our marriages, on our physical bodies, as well as the body of Christ. And all I want to know is this. When will we, as disciples of Jesus Christ, wage war back? See, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers. And when we let him, 
He even blinds the minds of believers too. I'm going to tell you why. He doesn't want us to know who he is. Secondly, he doesn't want us to know what Christ has done. Our second point for today, the enemy doesn't want you to know what Christ has done. The enemy doesn't want you to know what Christ has done. See, Adam and Eve sinned. See, Adam blamed God and Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. And God said, don't worry about it. My son, the second Adam is coming. See, God told that old serpent that day, and he told the whole world in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. The only thing is the woman doesn't have the seed. The seed comes from the man. So what God was saying was, I'm going to supply the seed and the seed will be my son and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his head. Heal. See, to bruise his head means he's going to deliver a fatal blow to you. You might strike out to him. You might strike him with 39 lashes. You might strike him on the cross, but he will deliver a fatal blow to you. See, this verse lets me know that before you ever had a situation, God had a solution. Before you ever had a situation, God had a solution. God was not running around panicking. God was not running around trying to figure out what was he going to do before there was even a situation with Adam and Eve and the serpent, the God that we serve because he's omnipotent, all powerful, because he's omnipresent everywhere, because he's omniscient, all knowing. Before you ever had a situation, God already had the solution. Here's the solution. Ephesians chapter two, verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. This is what the enemy does not want you to know. He does not want you to know that you have been forgiven. He does not want you to know that through Jesus Christ, you have been redeemed. He does not want you to know that through Jesus Christ, even though there was a gap between us, even though it one point you and I was once far away. He does not want you to know that through the blood of Jesus Christ, which was his solution, we have now been brought near to God. Make no mistake about it. Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed for us is the solution. First John chapter three, verse eight. Well, oh man, you're talking about tread. Listen to the, what the Bible says. The Bible says, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Talk about tread. See, the reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. The son of God did not appear to play patty cake with the devil. The son of God did not appear to compromise with the devil. The son of God did not appear to negotiate with the devil. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that the son of God appeared to take care of the father's business and the father's business was to destroy the devil, to destroy his works so that now he can be reconciled back to his children. See, the Bible spoke about sin in the opening verse in 1 John 3, 8. But then the Bible says the reason why he came, so you don't have to live like that anymore. You hear that? You don't have to live like that anymore. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy, to destroy the works of the devil. How did he do it? Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 tells us. The Bible says you were dead because of your sins. You were dead, remember, the first death because of the, the spiritual death. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ 
What did he do? For he forgave all our sins. Look at verse 14. It goes into more details. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Verse 15. Let me read verse 14 again. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. I don't know about you, but there's some stuff that God counseled over my life. There's some stuff that the devil had planned for me. There's some stuff that the devil had planned for you, but God stepped in and God said not so, and God canceled the charges. And not only did God cancel the charges, he took some stuff away. He took it away and he nailed it to the cross. Don't you go pick back up what Jesus Christ nailed to the cross. Stop taking off the cross what Jesus Christ nailed to the cross. The Bible says in verse 15, in this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. Hallelujah. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. See, this is what the enemy doesn't want you to know. He doesn't want you to know that the past of Jesus Christ secured your future. He doesn't want you to know that the past of Jesus Christ, he already secured your future. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you did. The Bible says what you need to do is this. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord because the past of Jesus Christ already secured your future. But that's not what the devil wants you to know. The enemy doesn't want you to know that because the moment that you begin to understand what Jesus Christ did is the moment that you begin to tread on his head. See, the past of Jesus Christ overrides our past. That's good news. The past of Jesus Christ overrides your past. The past of Jesus Christ overrides my past. The past of Jesus Christ overrides our past. And I love what Luke chapter 11, verse 21 says. It says, when a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. Look at verse 22. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. See, the enemy doesn't want you to know that Jesus Christ is the stronger one. This is why Satan lost his place in heaven. It's because he wasn't strong enough. And through Jesus Christ, you need to understand that Satan wasn't strong enough back then. And through Jesus Christ, Satan isn't strong enough now. This is what 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 is talking about when it says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. See, the enemy is the God of this world, the liturgy, but the God that we serve, he is the God of the universe. He is the God of everything. He is Lord over all, and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The God that we serve is the strong man. He's greater, and he lives inside of us. Jesus Christ is the stronger one. I love what Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 30. He makes, he makes it clear as possible. He says, I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming, but make no mistake about it. He has no hold over me. Hallelujah. He says, yeah, the little God of this world is coming. I'm about to, go cru I'm about to be crucified for your sins because I love you, but make no mistake about it. He has no hold on me. He has no hold over me. He has no power. He has no authority. He has nothing inside of me that he can identify with, and this is what the enemy does not want you to know. He wants you to think that you're a slave to your sin. He wants you to think that you're a slave to yesterday. He wants you to think all these things. He wants you to think that there is no way out. And truth be told, Jesus Christ already came and made a way. John 14, 6, I am the way.
Jesus said, the truth and the life. No man even comes to the Father except they come through me. But that's what the enemy doesn't want you to know. He wants you to stay in bondage because he knows that the liberator, Jesus Christ, has already come. He doesn't want you to know that there's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Freely given Such a 
There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. And there's power in the name of Jesus to tread on the enemy's head. What the enemy doesn't want you to know, he doesn't want you to know who he is. He doesn't want you to know what Christ has done. And lastly today, the enemy doesn't want you to know who you are. The enemy doesn't want you to know who you are. He doesn't want you to know that you're made in God's image after God's likeness, Genesis 126. He doesn't want you to know that through God's image, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139 verse 14. He doesn't want you to know that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now lives in you. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. He doesn't want you to know that you were created to be above and not beneath the head and not the tail. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 13. And that's why some of you are so frustrated. That's why you, you keep sensing that there's something more. It's because you was created to be above and not beneath. You was created to be the head and not the tail. But this is the stuff that he doesn't want you to know. He doesn't want you to know that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, that God commanded and God predestined for you to be over, over, over. He said it. He used the word over five times. So anytime you're living under, anytime you're living as the tail, you are not living in the environment that God created you to live in. You're living in a fish out of water and that's why you're frustrated and the enemy doesn't want you to know that you was created to be above and not beneath. He, would, he does not want you to know that you was created to be the head and not the tail. Deuteronomy 28, 13 and he doesn't want you to know that in whatever you may face that you're more than a conqueror, Romans chapter 8, verse 37. The disciple says, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Jesus said, and we're going to unpack this later, the next couple of weeks. I saw Satan. I saw him fall. I saw him fall like lightning from heaven. Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how have you fallen? I saw, I saw, I remember that I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Listen to the, the first word in the next verse, in verse 19. Jesus says, behold. Behold. In other words, since I saw Satan fall like lightning, since I came to redeem, since I came to reconcile, since I came to restore, since I came to give you back what the first Adam lost, now behold. In other words, open up your eyes and see who you really are. Open up your eyes and see how wonderfully I made you and knitted you together in your mother's womb. Open up your eyes and see that you're my masterpiece. Open up your eyes and see that you're my workmanship. Open up your eyes and see that you are complete, equipped, and entrusted with much. Open up your eyes and realize the power that I bestow 
bestowed upon you. Jesus says in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, behold, I give unto you, I give unto you power to tread on serpents. You don't have to live how you've been living. You don't have to be below. You don't have to live as the tail. You don't have to live as beneath. Behold, open up your eyes, open up your heart, open up your mind, recognize who you are. I have given unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But this isn't what the enemy tells you. He tells you that you're weak. He tells you that you're not worthy. He tells you that you're unqualified. And he tells you that you don't have what it takes. But Jesus says to you today, behold. 1 John 3, 1. There it is again. Behold. What manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be that we should be called the children of God. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power. Behold, I give you power to tread. He gave them power to become the sons, to become the daughters of God, even to them that believe on his name. That believe. That believe on his name. I leave you with this question today. Whose voice will you believe? Whose voice will you believe? Will you believe the voice that was spoken in the garden? Will you believe the voice that was spoken in the garden that spoke to Eve and to Adam, that told them that they weren't enough and that it needed to add to God's design? Or will you believe the voice from heaven that says, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. Which voice will you believe? Will you believe what the serpent whispered to Eve? You're not enough. Or will you believe the voice that spoke from heaven? You're more than enough. And regardless of what you do, regardless of what you say, you belong to me. You're my child. You're who I, 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 I love, who I am well pleased. Which voice will you believe? See, what the enemy doesn't want you to know, that regardless of your past, Jesus Christ's past already took care of that. So now your response is Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if we believe in our heart, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, that God raised him from the dead on the third day, that you shall be saved. If you never accepted Jesus Christ, that's what you need to do. Believe and confess. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. I want you to take a moment to do that. I want you to uh, inbox us or, 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 or click on our website and just let us know that you just accepted Jesus Christ or either rededicated your life so we can connect with you. And for the believer, it's time for you to understand some things. You need to understand that there is a real enemy. But even greater than that, there is a real savior. And you also need to really begin to understand and believe who you are through Jesus Christ. You was not created to be beneath. You was, created, you was not created to be the tail. You was created to be above. You was created to be the head. Jesus says in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread. So Heavenly Father, I pray in this moment that my brother, that my sister will behold. I pray that they will begin to see that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. 
I pray that they will begin to understand that they are made in God's image after God's likeness. I pray, God, that they will begin to understand, God, that they are loved, that they are forgiven, that they are called, that they are equipped, that they are God's workmanship. And God, you don't make any type of junk. I pray, God, that we will believe this. And I pray, God, that we will begin to walk in this and begin to tread on our past and begin to tread on the enemy like never before. It's not in our name. It's not in our power. But we understand today that there's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. If I was you, I would go to www.motionchurch.online. I would get these notes. I would print them off. I would screenshot them. I would email them to myself. And I would begin to, I would begin to meditate on this word. And I will begin to take my rightful place as God's son, as God's daughter, as God's child in this kingdom. It's time for you to take the authority back that Jesus Christ died on the cross to restore back to you. So I want you guys to take what you heard. I want you guys to take what you experienced. And my God, take this message and go put it into motion. I can't wait to see you next week. Peace!